Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here with uh, Paul and Benwell, and welcome to PBA at noon. Today, we're happy to welcome back E2 Gold. Since last presenting with us, E2 Gold has expanded their flagship property, the Hawkins Gold Project, and they've doubled their already aggressive exploration program. Um, here to discuss their most recent, uh, recent drill results and upcoming milestones are President and CEO um, Eric Owens, Vice President Ellie Owens, and um, Natalie. I believe we also have Natalie Pierre, and you'll have to correct me on this, Natalie Pierre Tracks Renault. VP Exploration. Natalie, Pierre Chuck Renault. Pierre Chuck Renault, yeah. There we go. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we apologize for any little um, technical issues we've had today. What we're going to do is um, the E2 Gold team will start their presentation, and then we'll take the Q&A in the chat and the Q&A box at the bottom of your screens after they're done. So thank you for joining us, and feel free to start when you're ready. Thanks very much for having us. Okay, and thanks everyone for joining us on this update webinar. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to talk with everybody about what we're doing at E2 Gold because there's lots of activities. So I'm gonna, of course, give a very brief overview of what we are as a company, where we're going. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the company, um, and then we'll leave it to Eric and Natalie to give a bit more detail on the update of our results. So for those of you who don't know us e2 gold is a junior gold exploration company we are based out of ontario north central ontario you can see in this inset map up here toronto is down here this is our flagship hawkins project it's very large 80 kilometers long um, 540 square kilometers um, with lots of interesting targets on it uh, the most notable one and the one that we're really focusing on right now is the mckinnon resource and that resource is 6.2 million tons creating 1.65 grams per ton for 328,000 ounces of gold and that resource is based on 1980s falcon bridge drilling it is 43101 compliant though and so why we like this project First of all is the location. It's located in a region that we consider to be an emerging gold mining district. You see Hemlo over here, Timmins and Kirkland Lake over here, but these gold mines in the center here really were brought online in the past 15 years. And what that means for E2 Gold and Hawkins is a good new geologic understanding of the area, good infrastructure, new investor interest. And that's really where our ability to try and grow this resource comes from. Um, also, though, we are located in a geologic region that we're very interested in. You can see the two limbs here of some regional shear zones, um, the north and south uh, shear zones here, which connect Hemlo and all of these other gold producers and also connect Hawkins. So in a geologic sense, we're situated in a very exciting and prosperous area. So before we go into the details of the Hawkins project, um, briefly our share structure, uh, many of you have seen this, we have a fairly tightly held share structure, 15% by insiders, 27% by, by funds, nine separate funds. And for a company that only went public a year ago, that's we're very proud of that investment by um, institutional funds. And we're gonna briefly introduce ourselves too, for those of you who don't know us. So I am a co-founder and the vice president. My name is Ellie Owens. Um, I am a geologist and a lawyer by background. I was a geologist for a couple of years, worked at some mining sites and exploration sites, and then became a securities litigation lawyer. And so I'm combining those two backgrounds at my position here at E2 Gold. And then we've got Eric as well. Yes, hi. Uh, so I'm the, of course, the president and CEO of the company, uh, co-founded with Ellie uh, and her mother. Um, I'm a geologist by education, experience, spent the first half of my career running around much of the Western hemisphere from Central and South America to, to the United States and, and Canada. Uh, over those years, I worked for large companies as well as small companies. In total, I've been involved in the discovery and building of some 7 million ounces of gold resources uh, in a few different deposits in, in uh, each of those jurisdictions. So we're here uh, to do it again. We I did it, we have done this before with uh, with Alexandria Minerals, and I'm here to do it again with E2 Gold. And we're we're uh, we're making a lot of we're having a lot of accomplishments here so far in our short life. And so a lot of you have seen Eric or I on on webinars before, but here with us um, is our VP Exploration, Natalie Pierchuk Bruno. And so she's been with us almost since the beginning of the at least our major exploration push with the project. So we'll have her give you a few details about her background. 
Yeah, thanks, Ellie. Yes, uh, Natalie Pierchuk Renault, Vice President Exploration. Uh, I joined E2 Gold in August 2020 as a senior mapper. Uh, my background is that I am a geologist just by training, I graduated from Western University. I've worked on many different deposit types. Uh, I started my career as a junior mapper with the uh, government working up in the territories. I work mostly in the junior exploration industry as a consultant in mapping and, and different um, aspects of mineralogy and ore modeling. And um, I worked my way up to managing field exploration projects and other aspects of the technical programs bringing uh, projects to 43101 compliant uh, listings like a PEA. So I'm very excited. Uh, Eric and Ellie asked me to join the E2 Gold uh, team and I'm happy to be here. Great, thanks Natalie. Okay, so about the project itself. So um, Hawkins project, we're zooming in here from that map we just looked at. This is a bird's eye view again. These are the claim boundaries here in black. And this is on top of a regional geologic map. Right in the center is the McKinnon zone, three and a half kilometers long. So you can see it's quite a small part of this very large property package. And on that property package, we have a number of very interesting targets. You can see these orange dots here represent some high grade historic prospects. Um, we also have the um, the KB claims over to the west that we staked in the past year. The KB claims sit in a really interesting area. You can see the Sugar Zone Heart Gold project over here. Right across this pink blob is this is a pluton, an intrusive rock, and we've got the greenstone belt rocks here in green. It's a very similar environment to uh, the, for the KB claims here. So we're starting off with a really interesting look at that. Um, at, at that set of claims there. Um, but just to note that really there are a lot of other targets on this property. We're focusing on this McKinnon zone here. And so Eric is gonna give us a bit of an update on what's happening at the McKinnon zone. So yeah, thanks Ellie. Uh, so here we see a vertical slice here uh, showing the McKinnon zone in purple. This is a longitudinal section. Uh, we've taken it and many of you have seen this, this image before. Uh, we're because this is where we're drilling right now, and we've taken it, flown it 140 kilometers, superimposed it upon the yellow colored uh, Hemlo mine uh, shown here. You can see just to give some perspective of what we're trying to uh, test in our current drilling program. So you can see here two principal targets shown in the red circles a shallow level step out or step down set of uh, drill holes that we've embarked on here. And then a second target, probably is where we're spending most of our time and efforts is the deep step out drilling where we're trying to intersect uh, the zone uh, between four and 600 meters depth uh, routinely. And that's a series of holes of 12 holes spaced 300 meters apart uh, in the hopes that at least we can hit in some of these holes, uh, a major zone, or if there's uh, a big footprint for the McKinnon zone. If the McKinnon zone has room to grow deep, uh, then uh, we should be able to hit it in some of these holes. Uh, we've completed 8,200 meters of that program, of the step out program at, at this point. Uh, that's a total of 18 holes so far. We released five holes last week, assays from that. Assays are filtering in. We, have, uh, we now have more assays coming in. And here's the, 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 the update, uh, the visual update for you here. Uh, the McKinnon zone again, shown in purple on this uh, diagram, this longitudinal section, you can see the black dots in the McKinnon zone there. Those represent the Falcon Ridge Pierce points from the 1980s drilling. So that was the limit of our knowledge when we first started this step out drill program. And then in the green dots are the shallow step out Pierce points. The red dots are the deeper level step out Pierce points. And those red dots with the numbers on them uh, represent the assays we've received or announced last week. And then the black dots are still the two holes that we're drilling right now to uh, finish off this program. So in, we've been, we've successfully, we've been, we're happy with the results in this drill program. We've successfully intersected the, zone, the McKinnon zone or the McKinnon zone-like geology in all holes we've drilled. We've hit at least anomalous gold in all holes we've drilled over quite good widths. We've hit proper alteration, the same alteration as we see up near the surface and up to 14.7 grams per ton, as you can see in hole number 28. We're still waiting for assays for the majority of our holes. Uh, they are arriving. We'll be ready to announce more of those as they come in and we, we think about those and make sure we, we get the, 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 the proper analysis on these. And we are still waiting for uh, we will be, we're still drilling the black hole. So we're, we're pleased with these results. Uh, 
uh, from this drill program. And these, I'm confident that we'll be following this up in the future with future drilling. So where, where do we go next uh, with our activities? Of course, we have to still finish up the McKinnon zone. Now, what this is a map of the Western 25 kilometers of our property package. The central Hawkins zone shown in the narrow stretch, uh, which is 15 kilometers long. And then the KB claims on the Western block uh, shown uh, in that 100 square kilometer block. Superimposed, uh, or the base map here is a, is a total magnetic intensity map. You can see the McKinnon zone there where, where the pointer is pointing. And uh, it's just, a, again, a small portion of that. 90% of our activities in the coming 12 months will be in the central Hawkins portion of the, of the property. And that includes probably pretty much 100% of the drilling that we do any follow-up drilling. But in addition to drilling, we have geophysics, IP, uh, uh, other types of geophysics that we're looking at as well. Uh, in, we've just completed an IP survey just to the west in that central red box there, uh, which will be used to help begin targeting to the uh, a long trend east and west of the McKinnon zone. And then we'll further step out as the year goes along further west to the uh, western side of the central Hawkins portion there with more IP. Uh, there's some high grade prospects there that have had limited follow up drilling. And then finally, we've already started doing work on the KB claims on the west. Uh, we've uh, reprocessed the magnetic data and I've identi identified three priority targets here shown in the yellow ovals, uh, which we will follow up with more detailed mapping and prospecting in, the, in this coming year with uh, follow-up IP surveys, all to lead to future drilling in 2023. Okay, and Natalie's gonna explain a little bit more about what we're doing outside of um, the IP uh, and geophysics processes. Yes, okay. So for 2020 uh, and 2021, we spent the majority of our time basically collecting the data. So we flew the airborne surveys that, that Eric has mentioned. We did the test IP survey. And then what we've done is we reprocessed that data using different filters. Um, and we've combined some of the old Falconbridge data to reprocess all the IP data together. Um, and we're looking at that right now, comparing that to our drill targets and our downhole IP. We completed downhole IP on 11 holes across the McKinnon, trying to get a better picture of, of the zone. Um, we also did a lot of surface work where we did mapping, we stripped out crops and took channel samples. So everything right now is being compiled, analyzed and interpreted. And our preliminary results is that we do see the uh, extension of the McKinnon zone geologically at depth. Um, we have seen all the indicators to us that's, that are similar to what we saw in the shallow, uh, shallow holes. And uh, now what we're doing is we are compiling, analyzing, and using various studies such as mineralogy, geochemistry, and structural as well to figure out as we overlay the data, what new targets do we have, and then the confidence of those targets. So then we can prioritize what um, our drill program is going to be for uh, 2022 in our phase three. So we definitely have a better understanding and we're continuing to increase and improve our stand understanding of the McKinnon zone and the geology surrounding it as we look at McKinnon in the context of this regional shear structure that we know goes across the property. Yeah, and, and to add to that, what Natalie is saying, a lot of what we're doing at E2 Gold is trying to, data collection is very expensive. And so we're really trying to de delve deep into the data and rethink about um, the McKinnon zone in a new in a new way. All of us have uh, graduate degrees in geology, um, a lot of our team likewise. And um, so we're trying to go further beyond just the simple MAG data that you get. What else can you do with MAG data? That sort of thing. And then just for going forward as how we're approaching this, uh, when we first started our program, our phase two drill program, we really only had uh, shallow holes to work with. We had the Falcon Bridge data, which gave us the dimensions of our um, McKinnon zone in space, which is basically only great. It didn't have a lot of geological information. And what we've done now is we have taken that zone, projected it to depth, looking at the angle. We had done our our phase two by drilling from the north and the south to really expand that kind of th third dimension and understand the geology and the context of that mineralization. 
So we have a much better uh, understanding, more understanding the rock types, the alteration, and the uh, kind of distribution of the assays. And then we are also working, as I said, with our structural and geochemical data uh, to get that um, model in place. So we did confirmation in the phase one. Phase two is basically developing the ge geological model, and then we're going to come up with some drill targets to test that model. Great. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah, and so just to, to wrap up here, um, basically all of this data that we're collecting, as, as both Natalie and Ellie are, are, are mentioning here, it's really all about targeting more drill targets. We have a big property package. It's 80 kilometers long. Uh, we're just scratching the surface in our current activities. We fortunately had the McKinnon zone to anchor us and focus our efforts while we learn more about the, the broader geology. Once you get out beyond the McKinnon zone, there's very little information, geological exploration, historical geological exploration to the east and west. Uh, it doesn't take much to get far away and be in practically virgin territory. Um, so we've got a multifaceted program, all aimed at you know, producing new drill targets uh, for E2 Gold. And, and there's no doubt we'll be following up on drilling uh, uh, in and around the McKinnon zone. We'll be spreading out further and further along trend and also testing new geophysical targets uh, off trend as well. So we've got a budget planned here uh, for uh, all our, our, our troop uh, desired activities for the for the year for the for the next 12 months and uh, so we could have a really active program for that uh, du duration thank you and if you have any questions please let us know ask away thanks uh to all of you uh we actually have quite a few questions so since you have this screen up um let's actually discuss that so this is an aggressive program um do you have can you touch on the cash on hand and the burn rate and, you know, will that take you into this, uh, this program? Uh, yes. So, so we have about a million dollars in the bank and that will not cover this program. We can sit and keep this going at a low level, non-drilling level for a few months, at least till April, May time. Uh, but we will need to raise more money to complete the desired program. Great. And um, what is cash on hand and the burn rate? Burn rate is without drilling, it's probably in the neighborhood of two to three hundred thousand dollars a month. If all we're doing is is uh, in, uh, interpreting data and so forth. And cash on hand is a little over a million dollars. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and where do you stand in terms of per, uh, permitting? So are you good for everything that you have planned here? Or are you waiting on any permits? For the majority of what we have planned, we have permits. Um, for some extra additional items that we'd like to do, we are waiting on permits, but they should come in um, imminently. Okay, great. Um, with the latest drill results showing deeper mineralization, uh, will your exploration strategy change from understanding the geology to defining the extent of the resource? Um, well, I think uh, the answer to that is probably yes and no. I think there's, we're still early days, but the goal is to, again, our goal is to try and find uh, a million and a half or two million ounce resource. Uh, and then we dispose of either E2 gold to a major with that resource or just dispose of the resource to a major. Um, and we're still not convinced right now that McKinnon is it or down below it, but we're such early days as I note, those deep level holes are 300 meters apart. And so far we've only gotten assays from roughly half of them at this point in time. The other, the remaining assays are percolating in now, they're just not complete yet. Um, there, you, could, you could miss a lot in 300 meters. So again, back to the concept of, of using every available piece of information that we have to help vector in follow-up drill targets uh, we need to use all sorts of geochemical data, which is still coming forth, and we'll be analyzing that data and interpreting that data and help guiding uh, the future planning for, for drilling. And just to add on that, to give some context of size, um, each of these squares here are 250 meters. So you can see that between some of these drill holes, um, there's still a very large uh, space between them, up to three, up to 400, some of them up to 500 meters between. So at this stage, the short answer is we are not at resource definition yet. 
but obviously, hopefully we will get there. Uh, and and shortly. also just to remember that once you go east and west of this image, there's no drilling along the trend. There's been no historical drilling along the trend there. So, and there's some, a few high grade prospects, for instance, the Colbert Dubroy dot over on the Eastern side there uh, that seemed to lie along the trend. Very little is known about that as of yet. Uh, so there's a number of things, a lot of work to be done yet at, at this point in time. Yeah, and just to emphasize that too, we've got the McKinnon resource in red right here. And you can see that it sits along a fairly continuous geophysical signature to the East and to the West hitting these high grade prospects. So at least, and basically none of these have been drill tested with the exception of these two. So at least there is some real um, easy targeting to try and expand um, a long strike. And some potential uh, significant upside here. Um, yeah. yeah, great. So are there any NSRs on the property? Do you own them outright? The, the uh, if you go, go to the last, there we go. So on the, uh, Gray, the narrow gray claims there, uh, which uh, basically uh, are, are the central Hawkins Township portion and eastward, there's the equivalent of a 2% NSR on those. Okay. The, the rest of the claims that we staked, uh, there's no NSR. Uh, well, there's an area of influence that's about a kilometer outside of these optioned ones. So the narrow portion are the optioned ones. So there's about a kilometer area of influence that also has a 2% NSR. Yeah. And then yeah. aside from that, everything else is 100% owned outright by E2 Gold and has no NSR. Okay, excellent. Uh, Paul, I see that you've joined us. Do you have some questions for the uh, E2 Gold team? Yeah. <clears throat> Just a couple of ones. Now, Falkenbridge got out of there in 1980. Why, first of all? And, um, and, how, did, and how did you guys acquire the properties? Um, the, the, uh, Natalie, you may have some insight on this, but I'll, I'll start and say that I think that, as is not uncommon, Falkenbridge was not really a gold exploration company. We think they went in to begin with. So the years they were active here was 1985 to 86. Yeah. Uh, Norander, their sister company, had was having success at Hemlo, and this was sort of a Hemlo lookalike. And the reason why we say it that there's a there's a disseminated component. Not only are we in sericitic pyritic schists, but there's a disseminated component as well as a higher grade component. Um, the the uh, we think that Falcon Bridge, uh, as the 1980s wore on, the the price of of, uh, of gold was dropping throughout the 1980s after peaking early in the 1980s. And Falcon Bridge was not a, not a gold company, they're a base metal company. And so they probably thought, hmm, it's a low grade near surface deposit at the time. Uh, probably what they were looking at was one, one and a half or less than that grams per ton. Not very interesting for, for uh, a price of gold that's down at $400 an ounce or whatever it was in the, in the mid to late 1980s. But also you could say the same, the reason why I bring up this map here is you could say the same about this entire area here. I mean, Island and Magino are rediscoveries, but all of these uh, mines and the rediscoveries of Island and Magino um, have brought on 26 million ounces of gold only in the past 15 years. And so really the entire area has been overlooked. And a lot of that has to do with just general trends in exploration and types of deposits that um, people are looking for. So um, in the 90s, there was a trend to go down to low latitude um, deposits, lower grade near surface deposits. And then finally, people kind of came back um, to this area in the early 2000s. And that's why you have these mines coming online now. Um, and so it's sort of a bit of a trend in geologic exploration as well. Okay. But as any, like, I mean, were these properties dormant for like uh, 30 years or whatever until you uh, took them over again? Yeah, there was, there would have been since the 1980s, uh, well, a decade after the 1980s. So in the 1990s, um, Don McKinnon, uh, co-staker of the Hamlo deposits, of course, uh, came in and staked over what Falcon Bridge had drilled. He did not do any drilling on the McKinnon zone itself. And so that's why we call it the McKinnon zone, of course. Uh, he did not do any drilling on the McKinnon zone is, itself. He, he drilled uh, a couple of holes here and there off to the northwest and off to the northeast, and that's all he did. Uh, there were a couple of small juniors in the, I think, in the late 80s, or sorry, late 90s and early 2000s that did a little bit of work as well. Again, they didn't touch 
the McKinnon zone uh, until 2017. A junior out of uh, Vancouver came in and drilled a, about 10 holes or so in the McKinnon zone. And they kind of reproduced what Falcon Bridge had done. They didn't add necessarily to the knowledge. They decided to stick to their knitting out in British Columbia and they, they ultimately dropped the property. This is a property. So uh, to second part of your question or your for earlier question, uh, I found, I've known about this project for about 10 years. Uh, okay. We've auctioned it from a private company in Ontario, uh, a, a friend of mine actually who who's, does picks up properties like this and and holds on to them and you know, sort of a project generator type of guy. I've known about it for about ten years. I've been was busy with it, uh, busy with other things, Alexandria and so forth during that period of time, and uh, so we this this came about in late 2019. Uh, uh, the opportunity came to uh, uh, acquire it or option it uh, just as I was setting up E2 Gold. And I figured the timing is probably good to get in it by that time. Got you. Now, the, the, you touched on one of your slides about the data from Falconbridge. I mean, uh, how useful has that data been to you? And are you going to do like the normal step out drilling uh, where they drilled, you know, like the 50 meter spacing so that you can update your resource uh, or. So I'll answer that last part of the question first. Um, I mean, their data has been quite useful and, and because it provides a level of detail that we wouldn't otherwise have. And even if, you know, the drill hole. Oh, so I'm actually I'm lying. I'm answering the first part of that question first. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, the the um, the level of detail from the Falcon Bridge data is good. Uh, there was a fair bit of core existing, but still not enough that was ultimately useful. It was mostly good for us to get a handle on things, and we can obviously look at the drill core. We just don't have a good handle on on the depths and things on much of that drill core. Uh, they did not do, I don't think, uh, Natalie, you can correct me maybe, but uh, I don't think they did a lot of geochemical uh, work uh, on the drill core. We're starting to get into whole rock uh, geochemistry and some of our drill core now to help uh, guide us. Um, and then um, their geophysics was very good. Geophysics was great. So we're now trying to compare their geophysics, their IP work with our modern IP work, because as we expand out beyond their data, uh, we need to know how it compares with 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 what they what they did. Nellie, do you have anything to add to that? I would say that basically Falconbridge did uh, assays, uh, old assays on their core, and there was a, a small study that was done on the geochem, but uh, there was no control on the depth. Uh, but it gave an overall sense of what pathfinder elements we might encounter which we did our own study to compare to that and did confirm it and we were able to confirm some of those pathfinder elements okay so i got one two final questions here that um do you have any indigenous issues in the area or how does that stand we have three um communities that are in the area and all of them are we're in communication with they are quite engaged. They provide a lot of feedback for us on our activities, how we can um, work work on, you know, work within the bounds of what they would like to see us do. And I would say they are quite engaged and very easy to work with. Um, and so I wouldn't say we have any issues. Oh, excellent, perfect. Yeah. Uh, and another quick question: Do you have any debt? No. No. That's, that's a good thing. And the final question is that, uh, you know, it's been a couple that have come into me here. The McKinnon zone where you're drilling now, you've still got some holes to come. Uh, to come. Is the, the results of those holes, that's going to indicate where, like, where your next program is going to be? Or are you going to try and concentrate on a very small area and just step out gradually? I mean, where's, where's the main, I guess the question is, where's the main focus going to be? I think we have to, it'll be in and around the McKinnon zone, but we're gradually expanding our, our horizons around the McKinnon zone. So, so until we hit a barn burner on, on, on this, these holes below where we know we can definitely go in, we have to do it all. We have to do a whole a multi-pronged approach. We have to step out to the east and west. We have to test new ideas and, and geophysical targets. 
and we have to follow up on on this drilling that we we're completing now and we don't know what all these results will be for another yeah. month of course so there there's going to be a multi-pronged approach we're going to be testing a lot of targets and unless there's something really obvious uh we'll be doing a number of different things gotcha all right, uh, uh, Eric, Ellie, uh, Natalie, merci beaucoup. Uh, thanks to everyone that was joining today. Uh, E2 Gold is listed on the Venture Exchange. The symbol is E-T-U. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your time today. Much appreciated. Uh, and thanks to everyone that joined. Take care. And, uh, and we will be keeping everybody posted on the news of the drill results as they come out. Thanks very yes, much. thank you very much. Thanks, Paul, Sophie, for, for your help in this and everybody that attended today. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.